So I wanted to take a few minutes and talk to everybody about the reason why I volunteer for Foundation Fighting Blindness. Um, there's a lot of different reasons, but the real reason is because at the age of seven, I was diagnosed with a rare eye can disease, ugh, if I can talk, um, called retinitis pigmentosa. Um, I didn't really know what that meant. Um, I don't think my parents really knew what it meant either. Um, as I was growing up, I kind of had some struggles just here and there. Um, I just thought it was normal. So did my sister. Um, for instance, one of the ones that we thought were just different was, um, every weekend when we were at my mom's house, we would play, um, flashlight tag. And when we would play flashlight tag, my sister, I would always tell my sister, I can't see, I can't see very well at night. And my sister would always hold my hand and we would play flashlight tag together. We would always be on a team. And I never thought anything about it. And, um, nor did she, it's just been a kind of a thing. Um, I've never really been able to see very good in dim lights or at night. So as I got older, um, I had my son at the age of 21. And whenever I did, I started telling my husband, I was like, something's not right. Like ever since I've had Caden, I've been having a lot of trouble seeing and my vision's changed and I don't know what it is. So I made an eye doctor's appointment. When I made the eye doctor's appointment, um, they told me that something had happened to where my eye disease had been triggered. And by triggered, it means that it had progressed. So I started to lose my um, peripheral vision. Fast forward, um, we moved to, we relocated to Iowa and I went and saw some, um, specialists in Iowa. They gave us a lot of different information and things that I could do. And at that point, um, one of the best things that they could tell me is take all these vitamins. And so I used to take a whole ton of vitamins and then they eventually said that that wasn't good because it wasn't good for my liver. And then they wanted me to do genetic testing. But the only way I could do genetic testing is if everybody in my family who had been had eye diseases or um, been affected by some kind of eye disease in my family would go to genetic testing. Well, unfortunately, not everybody in my mom's side of the family, because it comes from my mom's side, um, decided to say, okay. So we kind of let that go and accepted it and um, we ended up moving back to St. Louis. And when we moved back to St. Louis, we decided that we wanted to have our daughter, which I was scared to death because I was told that my eye disease was a genetic eye disease. And so therefore it can be handed down to my kids. Um, so I had my daughter and then went through kind of the same thing again. Um, I started noticing vision changes. And um, so I went to the eye doctor and they said that it could have been from the epidural. Something with the epidural could have triggered just like with my son and made my eye disease progress even more. So with that being said, um, I started seeing a lot more specialists and trying to see if there was something that I could do with my eyes. Um, they pretty much just gave me more and more information. Um, pretty much this eye disease is very unknown. So for each and every person, it can be completely different. Um, I myself, is it's progressed. Um, there's people that are born with my eye disease that are completely blind. There are people that have my eye disease that don't even know they have it and haven't even been diagnosed with anything and can still just see just fine. Um, it's really just depending on where I like where your progress is. So for my progress, I have no peripheral vision anymore. Um, and then the end of last year, I started having even more eye problems. And so I went to the eye specialist and the retinal specialist and they sent me to wash you to get some tests done and different things and come to find out my eyes have gotten worse again. And so I had cataracts on my eyes. So they decided that they thought, even though I'm 36, that it was still way too young, but it's probably the best thing that I could do because the cataracts were making my central vision cloudy. And so they said, if you get this surgery, then it'll help you and it'll help your central vision. 
So I did that surgery and long story short, it did not help my, my vision. Um, they said that it would make my night vision um, clearer and I would be able to um, see better at night, not necessarily correct everything, but you know, just help. And um, actually it was just the opposite, it's made it worse. So I used to be able to drive at night and now I can't drive anymore. Um, so it's been a big journey the last few years. Um, but I guess long story short, what really made me wanna be involved in Foundation Fighting Blindness where I really started getting interested in um, what they do and, and being a part of it and everything is, um, I started reading about it and they are, that foundation is all for all retinal diseases. So they research, have all kinds of different researches going on, clinical trials for everything. Um, but I will tell you that the main thing that made me want to do everything and anything that I could tell anybody or remotely do everything I could to help um, promote this um, foundation as well as be a part of the foundation is I went last February and it's an event that they have here in St. Louis and it was at the Ritz Carlton and it's called Dining in the Dark. And what that is, is people will come to this fancy dinner and um, they will eat dinner and they put these blindfolds on and they eat dinner with, in the dark. And instead of me being there as a partic like participant, I just, Kyle and I volunteered. And when we were volunteering, it was the most heart-touching, insanely, just incredible feeling I've ever had in my entire life. Um, I walked in the room and I didn't just have to describe my, my eye disease because people already got it. And they had people that were affected by it. Um, there was people there that had been completely blind by it. Um, it's really hard to describe to a lot of people what goes on. I can wake up one morning and be fine and see, in my opinion, like what I would call normal, um, have a good day with my eyes. Um, other days I can wake up and I don't have good days and I can't see with my central vision as well as I once did. Um, it's just a really hard disease to describe. Um, you have good days, you have bad days, you're stressed out, you don't see as well. Um, it's super bright outside and you don't have the right sunglasses on, or it's super bright, you get headaches, um, it's super bright, you, um, your eyes do these crazy things. Um, my eyes don't adjust, um, so like, the best way I can describe it is like for normal people, if you go into a movie theater and you walk in from the sun and then you go in, it takes you like a minute or two for your eyes to adjust back and you can see. For me, it's a 45 minute to an hour process. So whenever I walk inside from being super bright outside to inside to a, a dark room, I don't see. I, and it takes my eyes a while to adjust back. Um, I've had a ton of people ask me, well, if you just get LASIK eye surgery, or how about you just put your glasses on? Your glasses will fix it. Or why are you so blind? Like, you can't see anything. Or I just held this up to you right here, and you didn't even see it. Um, when you say you held it right here, like, in case you didn't notice, I don't see right there. I'm not trying to be rude. It's just a part of my life. Like I didn't ask for it. It's just the way life has, what cards I was dealt. So back to my story about um, dining in the dark. Um, I went to the event. I worked it with Kyle. We were um, by the photos and I met a whole bunch of people and um, either their family member was affected or somebody had been affected in the past or there's um, clinical trials. So there's actually a little girl here um, who has my eye disease that couldn't see and they've actually found um, a cure for her eye disease so she can actually see now. Um, she's, I think, five or six years old. She's the cutest thing. 
uh, so cute. And just to see that she has had that opportunity and is going to be able to live her life to the fullest and know that her parents are have that even more bigger hope for their family. It just goes to show that everything that I do, all the time that I'm spent, um, it's worth it. It's so worth it because you never lose hope. I hope every single morning whenever I wake up, I hope one day maybe I'll see what normal's like. Maybe I'll be able to drive and not be so have so much anxiety or maybe I'll be able to walk into a room and not worry about if I'm going to trip over something or bump into something and then be mad at myself for the rest of the day because I didn't see that. But, you know, I get mad at myself. Um, it is a huge emotional and psychological um, fight every single day. Um, but anyways, back to the dinner. I'm, I get sidetracked a little bit. Um, we went to the dinner. We volunteered. I met a bunch of people. Um, it was rewarding. It was so rewarding. And um, I'll never forget this. Um, Allie, I know you're probably going to watch this at some point in time. Or Linda, if you don't, if Allie doesn't see this, we please share it with her. Um, Allie is the events coordinator. And she was here in St. Louis for the Foundation Fighting Blindness um, Dining in the Dark event in February. And it was the very first time that I've ever met Allie. And I was volunteering and Allie and her mom are standing talking to me and Kyle. And she said, you know, kind of like we got in the conversation of why you were here, you know, whatever. And I had told them that I had retinitis pigmentosa and they were blown away because they had no idea that I had it. And Allie's mom starts telling us how she had a friend and it's now one of her best friends that she had retinitis pigmentosa. And when they first met her, Allie thought that she was rude because she um, didn't acknowledge certain things. And Allie was like, I just, after she started explaining it to me, like, we're the best of friends. And she goes, and I just realized now she wasn't rude. She was just couldn't see. And it was something that she couldn't help. And so we kind of talked during, throughout dinner. And then as the evening progressed, we got ready to leave. And Allie's mom came and hugged me. And it's going to make me cry because Allie's mom hugged me and she said, there's hope and we're going to fight this and we're going to fight it till the end and you're going to be all right. And that's the first time I got a huge group of people that have my back, that know what's going on, that I, I don't tell people. I don't tell people because for a couple different reasons. I've had in the past where people have tried to use it against me. I've had um, nasty comments said. Um, and people made fun of me. And it's hurtful. Like you don't, those people don't understand how it makes me feel. How I already battle every single day. And I'm already mad at myself. Or I get upset with myself. Or there's some days that I'm just like. I can't, like, I can't do anything for my kids. So then I have the guilt of, you know, their dad always has to take them everywhere because I'm too scared to drive. And I don't know, it makes me feel like a bad mom. And then you have these people that are supposedly your friends that make these blind comments or they make blind jokes or, you know, different things. And yes, have I learned to get thick skin? Absolutely. Does it bother me? nearly as bad as what it used to no because i realize that people talk out of ignorance like they say things that they don't understand when they say put on your glasses in a smart ass way or or they say why don't you just get lasik eye surgery or stuff like that like i have now realized that they're just ignorant like they just don't get it and it is what it is and i go about my day and, um, but back to Allie's mom, when Allie's mom hugged me and she told me that everything was going to be all right, that was the first time in my entire life that I felt like there was one, there was a person that was absolutely on my side that didn't even know me that was fighting for me. And that touched my heart so much that ever since then, I want to make other people feel that way. 
Um, I, I consider myself a pretty kind person. Um, I do have flaws, not gonna lie. Um, but my own family doesn't even understand what I go through. Um, I can explain it to them. They know that I don't like to drive at night. They know that I don't like different things and, and that when I'm around a big crowd of people, like my sister will be the first person to like, hey, grab a hold of me. Like we're gonna go through here or whatever or do because she knows I get super anxiety. Um, I just guess that like the best way I could describe my story is every day's a battle. I don't like to tell my work that, you know, there might be accommodations that I'm gonna need eventually because I don't know in a few years if I'm going to have my driver's license. Um, that's something that I'm struggling with right now um, because I don't drive at night right now, but I'm still allowed to drive during the day, but I don't wanna not, I don't wanna drive and be, um, hindering anyone else. So that's a battle that I have within myself too. Um, going to work, like anxiety, like it's just, it's so hard to explain, but, um, I have made a team for the virtual vision walk. Um, every year there's a vision walk, but unfortunately due to COVID this year, it is a virtual vision walk. It's October 24th, which is a very special day to me too. It's my sister's birthday. Um, but on October 24th, they're going, we're going to do virtual activities and there's going to be a ribbon cutting ceremony. And I'm asking, even if you don't have money to donate, to join my team, if you can share my video, um, just to get the word about the foundation out there. Um, I would really appreciate that because they're a wonderful team. They're doing wonderful things. I could go on and on and on for all the trials and clinical trials that they have going on and the different things that they're doing. Um, it's a real thing. They're really making progress, but it does cost millions and millions and millions of dollars for that to happen. So any little bit helps. Um, I myself, two blind brothers, um, I don't know if anybody knows about them, but they have Stargardt's disease and they've started their own company and they make clothing and um, you can blind shop. It's so awesome. I've done it myself. Um, they, you go on their website and you have the choice. You can go in and look at the merchandise and order stuff or you can blind shop and they will send you a package and it's um, one of their um, shirts or you know whatever they got going on that month or whatever. It's just... Uh, it's fabulous. Like it, it, they're really good guys and they're funny, but, um, they're brothers and they have Stargardt's disease and they have, um, created this company and all of their money and proceeds go to foundation fighting blindness because they're in hopes of a cure too. So there's, um, there's a lot of activities, a lot of people that are involved, but I guess my main thing is I just want to people to know my story and my story is I have two kids nine and 14 they're checked every single year they have extensive eye tests done um, pictures done to their eyes um, everything because I pray every single day that they don't get my eye disease um, because I don't know how I'm going to handle if I get those words that Kylie or Kaden have my eye disease because it's going to kill me um I know that I'll live through it and I'll, I will figure it out, but I know that that will definitely beat me down. Um, but I struggle. It's a daily struggle. I have severe anxiety. I have to talk to a psychologist now because of my anxiety. Um, I have good days and I have bad days. And um, I had to have surgery. Whenever I had my surgery this year, um, I was able to see without my glasses on and without my contacts in, and I could see up close no matter what, but whenever I had my surgery, I can no longer see up close. Um, so I struggle with that. This year has been a big struggle. Um, it's been really hard. It's hard to describe to people. It's hard to, I've kind of isolated myself this year 
Um, I don't do as much as what I normally do. I'm a very social person and I've just kind of been to myself this year because it's been really hard. Um, and I just want to say like, it helps to have a support system. And even though half of my support system, if not 98% of my support, support system doesn't understand what I'm going through, they try to, or they do special things to make me feel loved and that I'm okay and that everybody goes through something. Um, and it means a lot because there's a lot of people that don't have that. And um, I appreciate those people and I'm glad that they're in my corner and I can trust them because trust is a big thing, when, especially whenever it comes to this. Um, they, like I said, I've had smart comments made. I've had people make fun of me. I've had things try to, to be taken away from me because of my eye disease and it's not fair, nor will it ever be fair, but it is how it is. Like our society is just that way. And it's just something that I have to deal with. But, um, I know I'm just rambling on and on and on and I apologize, but I just want you guys to realize how important this actually is to me. And I also want to say thank you to all the people that I've met this year, um, with foundation fighting blindness. Um, having that network of people that can actually understand what I'm going through or tell me everything's going to be all right. Or, Hey, I did this dumb thing today. What dumb thing did you do? Or, you know, just those things that uplift you in just the weirdest, like littlest ways. Um, I really appreciate it. But the one person that I've got to thank the most is my husband. My husband goes above and beyond any person that I've ever met. He is my literal rock. Like we have our own special like little code things whenever we're out in public and he knows I'm scared that he does just to make sure that I'm okay. Um, he drives everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. Like our kids are both in sports and he drives everywhere and does everything. And he knows that like me going in the store, I get overwhelmed. Like it just, there's just things that people don't even understand that happen in my life that is super scary to me that somebody else would be like, oh, whatever, like that is nothing. Like, why are you even freaking out about that? But when you see through like this or for other people that are completely blind, if you put a blindfold over and try to do a lot of stuff, it's scary. And there's things you have to do differently. And so before you judge somebody, please, please, please try to put yourself in their shoes. Because a lot of the times that you're judging them, they're already judging themselves. They're already hard on themselves. And whenever you make comments or you do things and say things, it makes it even worse. And there's been days that I was just like, oh, maybe my life would be even better if, if I weren't here. I know that's the stupidest thing to say, but sometimes I feel like that. Sometimes I feel like that I'm such a burden and maybe if I didn't have this eye disease or maybe if I, if the kids could do their stuff, because, you know, a lot of the times Kylie does not understand. She, the poor thing, I love her to death, but she doesn't understand. Well, you used to drive to Target. We used to have a girls night on, you know, Friday nights when the boys were at practice. And you just don't even do that anymore. Do you not even love me? That kills me. But it's a part of it. And I try to explain to her. I try to explain to my kids all the time. That you know. I just have to do things a little bit different. And my son's getting. He's 14. So he's old enough. He understands. But I don't know. I guess my story is. Everything that I just told you. And plus a whole bunch more. And I just hope that, um, like I said, if you can't donate to or join my team, if you'll just spread my video so that if I can touch one person, this would be worth it. Because to be quite honest, it took me, I've been pondering on this for two weeks to do this video because I don't like to be vulnerable and I don't like to tell people about my eye disease. I don't like to tell them how I feel because I don't want them to use it against me. But at the same time, I feel like if I tell my story and people understand 
remotely about why I'm doing this and why I'm so passionate and the things I want to happen. I want a cure. I want a cure for not only for myself, but if something was to happen with one of my family members that they would be able to be, be cured. You know, it, it, even if it's not in my time, if I can raise money or give awareness or whatever I can do and somebody can get healed later on in life or find a cure, it's well worth it to me. So I think I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. I know it's been a long video, um, but if you, I'll put my link to the race. Um, like I said, it's October 24th. Um, I know COVID is kind of putting a hinder on a lot of things, but my plan is um, if for friends and family that are around here or that would like to travel up here, um, Kyle and I would like to have um, a little walk ourselves and then have people back over to the house um, to celebrate um, all site. But especially it would be my day for celebrating um, what's came along in the last few, few years. Um, so I love you guys. Thank you for watching this. And like I said, please like, share, um, comment. Um, I appreciate any feedback. And um, also... I'll put my team name, it's Rods and Cones, and the reason why it's Rods and Cones is because with my eye disease, um, that's what it's attacked. So um, we named our team Rods and Cones. Um, if you'll join, and we'll have some fun together. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye.